Hi everyone, it's Benjamin Mack, and today in this video we're going to get into something a little bit more fancy. We are going to show you how to work with sequin fabric. So a lot of people are always a little bit kind of cautious about going anywhere near sequins because they're like, how do you sew that? I'm just going to break my machine, the needle's going to keep breaking. And yes, facts, if you try and just put sequin fabric straight through, straight through your machine, then you are probably going to break a needle or two. So what you need to do is you need to remove the sequins from the area where you're going to sew. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. I went on to moodfabrics.com and I selected this amazing sequin fabric. I love a little bit of animal print and I love sequins. As you can tell by one of my gowns that is in the background here. Um, so it's one of my made to order pieces that I did a few years back now. Um, actually this sequin fabric came from Mood also. Sadly, not a stock item. Uh, but this one is a stock item, so if you want to get your hands on some leopard print sequin fabric, then you can go to moodfabrics.com and the number that you need is 304956. Just type that into the search field and order away. So I'm going to be working with this. I've got two little pieces. This piece you can see I've already done the preparation on. I'm going to show you how I did that. So what I want to do, one of these short sides is going to be where my seam is. And I want to mark out the um, seam allowance. I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance. I want to mark out the seam allowance with a basting stitch. And I want to be able to see that basting stitch on the right side of the fabric. So if I flip the fabric over, and then I take my needle and thread, I'm going to use a double thread here. I'm going to do a basting stitch all the way along, and I want it to go all the way through so that I can see the basting stitch on the other side. I want to be able to see it through the sequence. So you want to every so often just flip over to the right side and make sure that you can see that basting stitch. I find it easier to do it from the wrong side because what I can actually do is use some chalk or a marker, depends on what color the backing fabric is, but I can use that to rule out the line so that I'm really precise. And then seeing that line from the reverse side of my fabric makes it really easy to uh, keep my basting stitch line nice and straight. I have one of my pieces of sequin fabric and I have my needle and thread, and I'm gonna baste along that half inch seam allowance line. Now I did just suggest that if you wanted to, you could mark out that seam allowance line with some chalk or, or some other form of marking pen. Um, I haven't done that. I'm gonna use, um, I'm just gonna go by sight. But uh, if you feel like it will help you a little bit, then it's definitely a good tip, uh, should you wish to use it. So I'll start off with just going over in one spot just to help secure that basting stitch. While I'm doing all of this work, I don't want these basting stitches to come out. I will take them out eventually, but I want them to stay put while I'm doing all of this prep work. So I'm doing a long basting stitch on the outside, so underneath my fabric here, so it'll appear on the right side. It's going to be a long basting stitch, and then just a short stitch on the inside, and then long on the outside again. So I keep going all the way to the end. And as you're doing this, just make sure that the stitches that you're creating when you flip back to the outside, it's maybe a little hard to see the lights probably reflecting, but I can see my basting stitches here um, well enough for what I need them for in the next stage of this process. So I continue all the way along to the end. And then once we've done this, we can start getting rid of some of those sequins. So as an example, this is the piece that I prepared earlier. This is what we're aiming for. So you can see all of the seam allowance um, area, the sequins have been removed. Now it is very labor intensive if you wish to work with sequins and if you wish to do it the correct way. Um, if you have a heavy duty machine with a heavy duty needle and you just wanna try stitching through all these sequins, be my guest. Um, it won't look amazing, but at least it will be held together. Um, so that's the shortcut, obviously, but we're all about trying to do things the right way here. So um, I, I hope that you will choose to follow along with proper techniques. So that is my line of basting there. And if I maybe hold this up a little bit closer, you might be able to see on the outside, you can see that basting stitch right there. So what we're gonna do is everything on the other side of that basting stitch, everything from the seam allowance line to the cut edge of the fabric, we're gonna be removing all of these sequins. Now, removing the sequins, 
you need patience, let me tell you that. <laughs> it takes some time. Um, but what will help, I, sadly, I don't have my little thread snips. Who knows where they have gone. But I am going to use some scissors that are not my favorite scissors, these ones. So don't use your best fabric scissors for this because you are gonna be damaging the blade a little bit. When you're working with a sequin fabric, always cut it out with your, you know, your less valuable pair of scissors. Um, you wanna make sure that you're not dulling the blade on your favorite pair. And for removing the sequins, again, make sure if you, if you have some thread snips or something that has a really fine point, that will be a lot easier for you because you're gonna be able to get in there a lot easier. A slightly chunkier, tip to the scissor here is going to make things a little bit more of a challenge but it's still totally doable so I don't want you to worry about it and think ah I've got to buy some thread snips um, you don't have to have them it's just if you happen to have them and you want to use those then then they're a good thing to try so what we're going to do is as we're it's a little bit of a challenge to get it started but once you get started you'll get on a roll so what we're going to do is you can see here that these sequins are actually quite linear in the way that they've been attached to the fabric. Um, depending on what kind of sequin fabric you have, the sequins could be all over the place. But if it is linear, then that's great because then we can kind of um, uh, attempt getting rid of a few sequins at a time. So what you have to do is you have to cut through the sequin. It's like a donut that you're cutting in half. So you've got to cut through the sequin. And like I said, it's a little bit fiddly to get started. You're cutting through the sequin, you're trying to cut through the middle of the sequin, but what I want you to watch out for, if you look really closely in at your sequins, it's a little bit hard to probably see on the camera, but somewhere there's going to be a piece of thread that is uh, stitching through the sequin um, in order to hold it onto the backing fabric. You want to avoid cutting that thread. If you cut that thread, then it could start to release the rest of the sequin. So this is why we, um, we don't use a... Um, a seam ripper to pick out the stitching of the sequins. A lot of people might think, oh, why can't you just do that? Why can't you just break the thread and let the sequins fall off? If you do that, then your sequins that you need to fall off will fall off. But then also wherever, that, um, wherever the path of that thread continues into the rest of the fabric, it may start to unravel going into your fabric and then you'll start to lose sequins off of your finished project as well. So this is the reason why we cut the sequins away and then as you're cutting them away, and I recommend wearing some uh, glass, well, if you need to wear glasses, that's great, um, or some, some kind of you know, safety goggles or something like that because the sequins can flick up and they can go everywhere and you really wanna be careful and make sure that you're not uh, catching that in your eye. So you might've been able to see just then some of the sequins. I'll come back and show you a better example once I've got more of this done. But you can see how half the sequin I cut away, the other half I just picked it out. You just kind of flick it out. So it can be a little tricky, but just um, however you need to, to do it, then whatever works for you, basically. So there you go. I just pick up those sequins and I'm just going to continue along that line. Then I'm going to come back and go along the other line and the other line and so on until everything's gone and it looks like the finished product that you see here. And you can see, if, uh, if I hold that up closely, can you see there, you can see the, the thread that was stitching all those sequins to the fabric is still intact. Now, if you, if you happen to slice on the thread a little bit somewhere, I don't want you to worry too much. Another great suggestion that I've got is, depending on what the actual fabric is, a really lightweight fusible pressed on with some heat to the back will help just to hold those threads in place as well, should you accidentally cut one of them. So it's not, uh, the fusible is not a, um, an alternative option for um, fusing the back of the fabric and then just picking out all of the threads. That's not my suggestion. What is my suggestion is just a little bit of fusible on the back of your fabric. It's gonna give a little bit of support to the fabric. This is only gonna work for you if, depending on what the garment is that you're making, if the weight of the fabric or the handle of the fabric isn't going to be um, altered too much from what you want the final product to look like. So choose your fusible interfacing wisely, something very, very, very lightweight, just enough that it can grip onto the threads should they accidentally get cut. <laughs>
takes a long time to do this, but it's really worth it. So you can see now that I got rid of all my sequins out of both seam allowances. Um, you wanna make sure that if you've got any sequins that are not right on the line of your seam allowance, um, that you get rid of those too. So if you end up, after you've finished your seam, if there's a tiny little patch where a sequin is missing, you can always pull off some of the complete sequins from your scrap fabric and you can hand sew them back in place. So you can just fill in the gaps. Um, sometimes that's required. That one here looks a little bit close to me, so I'm gonna get rid of that as well. That's better. So um, now what I do is I just stitch this together like your regular seam, so right sides together, put in some pins to hold it, and then your basting stitch, <laughs> if your basting stitch has survived the trimming away of the sequin, sometimes you accidentally cut into it and then it starts to become loose and comes undone, but thankfully this one looks like it got a little bit kind of damage down here, but this one's fine. So you're gonna use that basting stitch as your guideline for where to stitch the seam, because you know that wherever that basting stitch is, that's precisely where the sequins on the outside of the garment, on the right side of the fabric, that's where they begin. So I'll pin these two together now, right sides together, making sure that I'm getting my seam nicely aligned. And you can always go back and have a look to as you're pinning. Go back and have a look and just make sure that you are actually lining up the two edges of the sequin area together nicely. It's good to double check these things just to be sure. Look at all that sequin there too. I love working with sequins, but they are very, very messy and they get stuck to you as well. Um, there's, a, there's actually an idea that we've had for a future video where we can show you some really fun things that you can do with the leftover scrap pieces of fabric from your sequin project. So tune in sometime soon and uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you a couple of fun ideas to, to utilize all of your scraps. All right, so that's pinned together. I'm gonna to go to my machine and I'm gonna sew it. So I'm stitching along my seam. I started with a, a back stitch. I'm just using a regular stitch and I am using a regular stitch length as well. So just using my standard stitch length. And I'm remaining on that basting line. And when I get to the end, I finish with the back stitch as well. So that is my seam done. I took my fabric out of the machine and I am removing the basting stitches from both sides. Sometimes if you're really accurate with your sewing, you may have stitched on top of that basting stitch, so it can be a little bit trickier to remove it. Eventually you'll get it. Okay, so all that's done. Finally, you just press the seam flat and open. You can see no sequins there. Turn over to the other side. Now when you're pressing sequins, make sure you're covering them. Cover from the back of the fabric as well as the front of the fabric. It's always a good idea to have a pressing cloth on hand. And this is it. That's my seam in sequins. All right, well, thank you again for joining us for our sequin tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel inspired now to work with a new fabric maybe that you haven't worked with. Um, do a little test run first, experiment. Uh, choose your pattern wisely. I always say that uh, garments for sequins that have, you know, minimal kind of seams uh, usually are going to work out a little bit better. You don't want to give yourself a complete headache. Um, so try it out. Try working with sequins. And if you love this sequin, remember it was 304956 is the product code on midfabrics.com. We've got a whole lot of stuff that you can look at there. So just type in sequins into the search field and be amazed. 
I look forward to seeing you soon. Remember, if you're really enjoying these videos or if there's something specific that you love, um, that you'd love to see, then pop down below and put a comment in for us. I'm reading all of them, Mood Fabrics are reading all of them, and we can't wait to be back here again soon with more to show you. All right, take care.